Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So in the past I've done Banggood uh, product reviews and this is another Banggood product review. Uh, this time though instead of being a tool, it's a 3D printer. This is the uh, Creality Ender 3, uh, not the Pro, just the regular Ender 3, uh, which is based off of the Prusa i3. Uh, and the software for this is available um, as open source and is available um, from GitHub. Uh, this printer can be shipped from uh, China, Europe, and uh, the United States. This one was shipped from the United States. And uh, just to be completely transparent, I'm going to give a review of this uh, printer, uh, how it's packed, how it assembles, how it goes together, how it prints. Um, and uh, for doing that, I think uh, you know Banggood has agreed to let me keep the printer. So that that's it. Um, that will not in any way affect uh, my um, review of the of the printer. I'll give you an honest uh, review whether or not if I would uh, consider buying it or not. Um, so uh, now let's uh, I'll tell you what, let's uh, open the box up and let's see how they uh, packaged it up. Okay, so let's open this up and see how they've packaged it up. You know, sometimes uh, you order stuff, I've ordered stuff from China and wonder how in the world it even got here. Uh, in, in one piece because it's been packaged so horribly so you know I don't have any expectations here let's see what happens all right okay so um, the initial uh, there's nice uh, high density foam here on top oh looky there so this is this is actually pretty nicely packed it's got uh, got some blocks built in there all right, so let's see what we got here. So it looks like um, we got the uh, assembly. Uh, we have the assembly instructions. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And let's see what uh, what else we have here. Okay, this is the. Uh, it's hard to see there, but there's the display unit. Uh, it's in its uh, in its anti-static bag. We can maybe pull that out and take a look. Yep. So there's the uh, there's the Ender display unit. So um, the back is exposed. Uh, we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Okay. Well, let's see what else we got in here. Um, all right. So it looks like uh, yeah, this is well packaged. All right. So here's some extrusion. Uh, this looks like uh, 20 by 20 mil extrusion. I believe this extrusion is used for the top. In the um, and to ho hold the uh, X uh, slide assembly, so we'll put that uh, right there. And here we have uh, this is the this is the feed um, for the uh, um, for the filament, and then there's the uh, there's the X axis. So all right. See what else we got here. Um, it is really well packed in here. All right, so there's the power supply. All right, let's uh. All right. All right, so here's the base of the unit and there's the hot end okay so we got that all right and that was uh that was really well packed everything is uh cut and got a place to sit and uh we'll set this right over here hopefully we'll make sure we don't set it on the hot end and let's move this okay and let's see here uh power supply cable. Uh, this is the part that holds the uh, filament spool. This is the other part of that. Um, some linear slides. And then, aha, uh -huh, okay. So here we have uh, some, looks like 20 by 40 extrusion. These are the uprights uh, for the Z axis. Here we have the uh, lead screw uh, for the Z axis. 
um, a little handy dandy spatula the z-axis motor and looks like here in this tube we have uh, yeah, it looks like there's a little filament in here. Let's see what else in here. There's a little filament in here. Now I have a. That's not much filament. That's not going to do much. Um, we're, we'll see what uh, what that does. And then looks like there's a limit switch, uh, belt tensioner, some spare parts. Uh, there's a thumb drive with a little SD reader. It probably has the software on it. And then last but not least, here's a package containing tools, zip ties, and hardware. So that's everything. So um, I will say that the, um, that the uh, printer was well packaged. You know, I, I think that it could, uh, it could travel from about anywhere to anywhere and not be damaged. And uh, so we'll uh, bring the camera in here a little bit closer. And let's take a look at the assembly instructions. And, and uh, we'll talk more about this stuff. Okay, before we start assembly, I just want to go over the tools that they give you. Um, there's a little uh, piece of spring wire here. This, is, I'm sure, is used to uh, clean the, uh, the nozzle on the uh, hot end. Uh, they give you two little wrenches, a little screwdriver, some Allen keys, a pair of nippers, and a spatula. I guess the spatula is to pop the uh, print off of the uh, build table. Uh, the build table uh, has a removable mat, so you see that there, it's a stiff mat, it's not a flexible mat. Um, and then uh, additional tools I might be using are uh, a, a square, okay, now this is an Incra, this is a pretty nice square actually. And uh, i got a pair of steric calipers here, so just in case if I need them so I can measure some things and check it out. So uh, they give, and hopefully I can get this in the shot, uh, they give assembly instructions here, and the assembly instructions look to be um, uh, 12 steps. Uh, shows all the parts that are packed with the kit, and uh, the extrusions, the screws, the tools, and then of course the building steps. And we'll go through step by step and see how it uh, see how it goes together. Now I won't be. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll briefly talk about each step, and then um, I'll probably will be fast forwarding through each one. But now before we start to build it, uh, or before we start putting the uh, uh, printer together, I uh, want to look at what I've been given and make sure that it's in a usable state because you know sometimes things during uh, moving can loosen up and that sort of thing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that uh, this, this base frame, you have these two horizontal pieces, I believe these are probably, uh, these look to be about 40 millimeter square pieces here uh, and a, a piece of 40 millimeter square uh, uh, extrusion going across the middle these should be square and flat and these are pretty good shape uh, the next thing I want to look at before I start um, assembling is the Y plate in here and see I notice that this is loose okay so uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, 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 adjust this here so that we don't have any play before we actually start any building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to get something to uh, uh, lay this on so that it's supported and not laying on the bed itself and uh, we'll look at the bottom side and see how to uh, see how to adjust these rollers so that uh, all the slop is out of it. Okay so I've turned the uh, printer over and I've stacked it up on a couple of boxes I knew that this printer didn't come with much PLA, so I ordered some. So I'm just using the PLA that I ordered separately uh, to use for this printer so that I can get to these rollers. Now, if I look here, hopefully the camera picked this up. You see this is sloppy and loose. Now, really, what we want is um, these, these tires on these bearings are beveled, right? They're angled, and they should roll in this angled groove of this extrusion. One side, uh, the back side here, which you probably can't see, is non-adjustable. This side, uh, maybe the camera will pick up, you'll see there's a couple hex nuts. These uh, uh, are cams that will uh, move the tire in and out. So really what I want to do is I want to tighten these up just enough to take the slop out, right? 
but not so tight that I'm wearing out the the uh, the tires. So I'm going to take this and and crank it in, and hopefully that's the right way. And what I want to do is I'm going to crank that in until it just snugs up. And you may have to fiddle with these a little bit. Okay, so now, if you look, the play in the slop is out of that. So that's that's perfect for that, and these aren't too tight. What I'm doing is I'm holding the back wheel, and I'm just taking this one here, and I want to be able to turn it, right? I just don't want any play. So I want enough freedom so this will slip on the uh, extrusion, both front and the back, right? Uh, but I don't want any play. So that's uh, that's going to be about perfect. So I want to go ahead and flip this back over and I think we're done with this part here and we can actually start building from there. Okay, so uh, like I said, this is a 12 step uh, uh, part diagram here or assembly diagram. We're going to start here with step one. Step one uh, takes the two, uh, I think these are these look like 20 by 40 extrusions. Uh, that takes uh, four, uh, these are M5 by 45 uh, socket head cap screws and then of course there's an M4 Allen wrench here. Uh, there's a subtle difference uh, to these uh, uprights here. One has two holes in it uh, which will go on the right hand side of the machine that will get the uh, uh, will get the uh, power supply bolted to it and the other side has uh, just two holes uh, which will end up getting the stepper motor uh, mounted to it. So let me, let me get my bits and pieces here out of the way and uh, let's let's put it together. So I'm going to start with the right hand side. Uh, I'm going to use uh, this little um, uh, square here uh, to uh, line things up, make sure things are nice and square and, and I'll I'll show you that here in just a second. So I'm going to turn the uh, thing up here on its side and hopefully you can see this okay. All right. Okay, now I have those screws in there, but they're not tight. I still have a little play. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my square here and set up here and make sure that my bar is nice and square with my... Um, I'm going I'm to take the square here and make sure that this is nice and square with the... Uh, um, with the side frame here before I tighten this up. Now keep in mind these are aluminum extrusions. They don't have to be torqued super tight. If you torque them too tight, they'll, you'll just strip them out. So get those good and snug. Okay. Alright, so that's the first one. I'm just going to turn it over on its side here. And we'll get the second one in place. Okay, I'm, again, I'm going to just get them started and get these most of the way in. One thing I do want to point out is that these, uh, these little cap, cap screws um, do have uh, little lock washers on there. So again, I'm not going to tighten this all the way. I'm going to put my square over here and make sure that my piece is square and then we'll tighten them down. And you probably don't have to use the square. I'm just using it just 
just as an added precaution because I, I've always felt like you know the the more square or, or the the closer you can uh, adjust things uh, your better your chance for success okay so the uprights are on there and there we go all right so let's uh we'll get our instructions here and see what the uh the next uh next step is okay again i don't know if this is going to show up because of the light all right so the next step is that we're going to attach the power supply and the uh, front display panel both of those go on the right hand side of the machine as you're looking from the front and it requires uh, two uh, M5 by 8 screws and two M4 by 20 screws and then that will require an M3 Allen head wrench so let's start with the um, let's start with the power supply so we're gonna have to have the power supply here and of course we're gonna have to have the front display all right, so the um, uh, power supply is going to mount from behind on the backhand side, okay, with these uh, screws here. And probably the easiest way is uh, poke those in there and let's get them started. Okay, that takes care of that. So now we'll uh, get the front panel. This might be easiest to. Okay. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that uh, the PC board on this is exposed, right? So then it's not high voltage or anything like that. Um, but you could actually short the thing out. So one of the uh, uh, upgrades that we're going to do is we're going to print out a cover for this here just to protect it. So. Okay, that concludes uh, step two. Let's, uh, let's get the stuff out and see what we gotta do for step three. The next step is to install the Z-axis limit switch. And they tell you to, uh, you know, from the bottom of the uh, frame to the bottom of the bracket is 32 millimeters. But they've since uh, changed the design of this little bit, uh, of this part a little bit. And if you see here, there's a little tab and that little tab, see, will actually sit on top of this extrusion. The other thing I want to point out is that uh, the T-nuts that go in these things, um, they're kind of interesting. They're, they've got rounded corners, so if you line them up vertical like that and then turn them, they'll turn and then stop and catch themselves. So uh, what I've done is I've unscrewed the uh, screws, uh, so I'm only catching a couple threads, and then what I want to do is line those up like that slide that down until it catches and hopefully that will just like that okay yep and see that's sitting down that's sitting down on the uh, thing okay so the z-axis limit switch is uh, in place and we may have to adjust that later when we do some fine-tuning so let's uh, get the instructions out and see what parts next Okay, so next is step four. Step four, we need the lead screw and we need the Z-axis stepper motor and it looks like we need two uh, M4 by 18s. These are countersunk heads um, and it takes a, uh, these take a two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. So I think what I'm gonna do is, all right, there's, um, there's threaded holes in the extrusion for these to thread into. So hopefully we can get these lined up here and see what happens. Okay, so the, uh, the Z-axis motor is attached to the vertical frame and the lead screw is attached to the motor coupling. And I've just got that good and snug. So may have to adjust some things. I'm looking up here. I'm seeing a gap um, up here, but there is a little bit of flex. So you know, I, I suspect that once the uh, once the printer is together, there will be some adjustment that's going to uh, need to be made, just so that everything is uh, free flowing. 
So we'll get the instructions now and we'll see what's next. Okay, so the next step is we have the, uh, this is the uh, uh, the feed motor. I'm not sure what they call it. It's, uh, well, the extruder motor is what this is. And then the um, stepper motor that uh, runs up and down the Y axis. Uh, and then we have this uh, piece of extrusion that gets attached to this. And then this gets attached to the top of the machine. So um, the first thing I want to point out is that um, there are two different 20 by 20 millimeter extrusions. And you'll notice that uh, one has two countersinks close to each end. Hopefully that will show up. Uh, that, that's the one that actually goes to the cross top. So that's not the one we need. The one that we're going to use um, has a couple of countersinks and you'll notice that uh, on one end there's two screw holes that are close together on the, and then the other one they're further apart. So this is the end here that we're going to that we're going to need. So right here uh, I have the uh, stepper uh, motor unit you know for the uh, to feed the uh, the Y uh, axis and uh, the uh, and the uh, the, f uh, the extruder but before I do that if uh, um, I'm gonna take this here and I want to I'm gonna set this on this side uh, on this uh, vertical rail right because I want to test the fit of these rollers I want to make sure they don't have any play you know, I'm going to hold this against here and make sure that this spins a little bit so that they're not too tight. And if yours are too loose or too tight, there's a hex uh, adjustment here that you can take your little wrench and adjust this wheel in and out until you have the proper um, proper fit. So, um, this takes uh, two, uh, I think, M4 by, let me see here, uh, M4 by 16 screws and Hey, what I want to do, you'll see that there's two holes here. I'm going to stick these through just like this into these holes and that way I can get my wrench. There's two holes in the back. So I can get my wrench down in there and into the, into the screw. Now on this extrusion, remember I told you that there's a counter bore here. This counter bore here is to clear this screw. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. And then, of course, there's the two screw holes that we're going to screw into. So hopefully I can get this lined up here. Now before I tighten these all the way up, you'll notice that this bar is flat. I'm just going to make sure that my extrusion is level with the top of the bar here. That way I gotta know that it's reasonably straight. And then I'll come back in here and tighten these up. Okay, with that tightened on there, we can bring this up here and get this started. It's kinda hard to see. Alright, so that's in place. Okay, now the only thing that I uh, haven't attached here is the, uh, the, the fitting that holds the Bowden tube and I'll come back and attach those uh, when I get more of it put together. Alright, so let's look at the next part and see what we got happening. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we just finished step five. So the next one, um, uh, these are a little problematic well not problematic but they're they're you know kind of uh, awkward so I'm gonna do step six step seven and step eight and I'll try to get the camera in uh, the best angle I can so the, uh, for step six we have a tooth belt that's right here this uh, drives the uh, uh, the hot end back and forth along the x-axis so we have that uh, we have um, the hot end which is right here, okay, and we have the bearings that go on the, uh, we have the bearings that go on this side here that attach to the uh, x-axis, and uh, then we got to attach the uh, the belt tensioner. Uh, we got to attach the belt tensioner, uh, hook the belt into the uh, uh, hot end, and and from there. So I'm going to show all these here and and. Uh, 
I'll speed through the parts that are a little less relevant and we'll go from there. All right, so the uh, teeth are pointing down. We can go through here. Okay, the belt's on. Just gonna make sure it's laying down here in the extrusion. Next goes the hot end. Okay. And then uh, let me reposition the camera. Okay, so we're looking at the back of the machine here. Now the tooth belts, you'll notice that there's two little slots, one on each side, and the belt has these little brass um, crimps on the end. So we're simply just going to take that there and slide that uh, in that groove and see that that uh, crimp prevents it from pulling out and we're just going to do both sides just like so all right so the belt is now attached to the uh, extruder head so the next thing I need to do is get the um, uh, the guide pulleys here on this side so let me reposition the camera and figure out the best way to show that and let's get that on there all right, so the next part to put in are these uh, idler bearings. They run on this axis here, and uh, they have a couple of studs that stick through that don't quite really clear this piece of extrusion. So when you put this on, you will have to flex this extrusion out toward the front of the machine. So I'm just going to slide this on like so, okay? And then there's a uh, there's a there's two screws that go in the back, and of course uh, there's a uh, countersunk hole that uh, the stud goes through here from the pulley. Okay, I'm just going to give the lead screw a little twist and that uh, goes up and down very, very nice. So, Alright, so that's pretty good. Okay, so let me... Uh, uh, the next thing that we need to do is, uh, I'm going to reposition the camera here, but the next thing I need to do is I need to get the idler or the belt tensioner on. So let me, uh, let me get the camera adjusted and we'll do that. Okay, so this is the belt tensioner. Uh, it has uh, two little T-nuts that slide into the channel here. And then, of course, you have a pulley here or, you know, a bearing here with a couple um, shoulders here that's going to sit in the... Uh, uh, the belt's going to sit in. So what I've done is I back these screws out so, so that I'm kind of catching, uh, just catching the uh, nuts and I'm going to line those up horizontal so they'll slide through. And we'll get this started here. I know my hand is probably in the way. Alright, so I got the belt on there and let me get these started. Okay, now I'm just going to pull this until the belt is tensioned. And I'm not sure, to be honest with you, I'm not sure how hard to tension this, so I'm just going to, you know, put a nice little amount of pressure on it. The belt is fairly, and I feel it driving, so that, I think that's pretty good. All right, so, um, now we'll get our instructions and see what the next bit there is to do and we'll go from there. Okay, so the next step is um, we want to adjust the feed nut, okay? And the way we're going to do that is uh, we're going to bring the axis all the way up to the top and kind of figure out where this is going to go. We're going to loosen these up, okay? Uh, just like this, okay? The nut is, uh, nut's been loosened, okay? So there's, this can actually play back and forth and then I'm just going to snug these when it comes to its natural resting position okay I'm just gonna barely snug these okay like so okay so that's just snug now to test this I'm gonna test this for binding and how I'm gonna do that is I want to run this screw down and then back up and make sure that there's no binding. All 
Okay, and that feels pretty good. So we're done with that step. Uh, let's see what we got to do next. Okay, so step 10 um, takes the other piece of 20 by 20 ex ex extrusion. Okay, it gets screwed down to the top by some uh, M5 by 25s. And then there are finally are a couple of little plastic pieces that get pushed into the end to finish it. So let's do that. Now remember this is uh, aluminum extrusion so you don't want to tighten these down too tight and you strip them out and just want it snug. And then finally we have these little pieces here that go on the end. And they just push on. Okay, we'll get the uh, instructions and see what the next step is. Okay, so we're finally on step 11 of 12. Now this is probably the last mechanical step because step 12 is uh, wiring. How about we're going to attach the spool holder. Spool holder is attached with uh, two um, M5 T-nuts and two M5 by 8 uh, to the bottom. And we're going to push this. We're going to attach this as far this way as we can. So here you see we've started the um, T-nuts onto the screws and I've got them just barely started. And I want to put the flat edge facing out. Hopefully Okay, and then finally, the spool holder is through here, and it's just got a nut that fits and cranks on. Just like that. So, all right, so that's where you go. So, uh, the last step, uh, step number 12, are all the electrical connections. So, we'll, uh, we'll go over those here one by one. Okay, the first three electrical connections that we're going to make is that there's four pin wire that goes to the extruder motor. It has a little clip on it with an E, so that's pretty good. It just pokes right into there and we'll seat that just like that. And then here we have the another motor wire that's marked X. This is for the for the X motor. This runs the uh, hot end back and forth. And it will go right down here. I think I got it backwards. Yeah, there we go. And you probably use a little wrench here to kind of push those up and make sure that they're fully connected. And then finally, there's a limit switch here for the X axis, and it's inside here, so you're just going to have to kind of get it lined up and then push it on like so all right so that's the first three connections made okay the next bit we're going to hook up is the power supply and it's right over here and it's uh it's an index connector so you can't get it you can't get it in there incorrectly okay and then let me uh let me reposition the camera and we'll hook up the rest Okay, the next wire I'm going to hook up, this is the Z motor, so it brings the up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and get this in here. Alright, and then over here this is the Z limit switch and it plugs over here. Remember we hooked this up early on. Alright, so that's, that's that. Okay, the instructions uh, tell you to hook up the Y motor and the Y limit switch, but Actually, they already hooked them up. The Y motor hooks up here. The Y limit switch hooks up there. So I think that the only thing that we really have left to hook up is the display. So let me uh, let me move the printer and get the uh, uh, camera in position and we'll hook that up. Okay, finally we need to hook up the display. And uh, it's a ribbon cable. And there's three connectors on the display. And we're going to use this very end one. Okay, so... Hopefully I don't get my hands in the way here too much. Okay. 
Okay, just like, just like that. Okay, so um, all the uh, all the cables are hooked up now. Remember, I told you uh, earlier that uh, I would get this belt into or this uh, this tube uh, hooked up. So let's do that now. Let me get the parts for that, and we'll address that. Okay, so I was actually supposed to do this step earlier, and I just didn't. So I'm coming back to do it. So this is, a, I think it's called a Bowden tube, and the filament slides through this tube to the hot end, and it's actually fed through here through this extruder. So this uh, this connector goes right here, and we'll snug that up like so. Don't want to probably get it too tight. All right, now this tube, you see this slides in and out, right? So you slide this out and, uh, or maybe it's in, I don't know, but anyway, this tube will slide down in here until it bottoms out, okay? And then they give three little clips, and these little clips are different sizes. And what you want to do is put the clip that will hold that extended out. In my case, it was the largest clip. And see that prevents the tube from coming out. So that's that. So now um, I think uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, I need to do some cable management. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. I'll, I'll, I'll do that um, off camera. Um, there needs to be, I want to talk about uh, the, the build for a little bit. So uh, let me let me get the uh, let me get the camera repositioned and, and we'll talk about the build. So we'll bring you right back in. Okay, so um, we've got it unboxed. It's all put together. I need to uh, run some cable management. But let me, uh, let me mention a few things here. Uh, they do give you a little bit of um, PLA, uh, but I'm not sure what you would print with that. I don't think there's enough there to print with. Now, being aware of that from seeing uh, on the ad, uh, on Banggood's site and looking at some other reviews, I went ahead and ordered some. So PLA is not going to be an issue. All right, so it also came with a uh, uh, micro SD reader and the software's on that and we'll look at that uh, in, the, uh, in a different part of the video. All right, so there were uh, plenty of uh, extra screws left over, so that's kind of handy to know that they give enough hardware to have some extras. And also have an extra um, Bowden connector and uh, uh, extruder end. I mean, a uh, hot end uh, nozzle. So, um, so that's good. All right. So um, there's a couple things about this printer, uh, about the build. The uh, build instructions for this area here are, uh, you know, it's just some messing around. Now, you know, it probably took me an hour to do it, you know, uh, messing around with the video camera and this and that, but I think you could probably put assemble this printer probably in about 30 minutes or so, you know, 30, 35 minutes, it won't be too bad. Um, but now there um, are some things that I think that I, I will do right away, and uh, I'll, uh, I think there need, I need to make a cover uh, for the fan. The fan is exposed on the Ender 3, so things could fall down into it. The back of the um, display module is exposed, so I think a cover back there. And I think, uh, you know, some, some cable management uh, and stuff like that are in order. So I think that I want to do some test prints, and, and um, uh, I'll do those off camera. And uh, I'll come back and I'll talk about, you know, the printing and, and uh, my experience with that. So um, uh, through the magic of... Uh, video. I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, so I've had a chance to um, do some prints and uh, let me show you what I've done. So here you see there are two cats. Uh, this one here is the very first one I printed. Now on the uh, SD card um, that comes with the uh, with the printer, there's a G code to print this cat. And uh, there's also, you know, in, uh, manuals and, and everything you need to get started, including the um, uh, slicing software for Creality. Now I am a Linux user, uh, so that uh, and the uh, installer they gave me was for um, 
for Windows. So I went ahead and downloaded Cura. Cura has uh, default settings for the Creality Ender 3, so that uh, that uh, was a good thing. Uh, so I re-ran, I, I downloaded the um, the model um, <clears throat> and sliced it in Cura and printed it again to see if there's any difference between my settings and the and the code that came with the printer. And I I can essentially see no difference between uh, my model uh, that I sliced in Cura and uh, the model that uh, was supplied uh, as G-code on the card. So, uh, given that, um, uh, you know, I was pretty pleased. Now, of course, before I ran uh, any um, prints, I made sure to level the bed, and I leveled the bed just by using a piece of paper slid underneath the, the print nozzle. So, that worked out pretty good. So, uh, having uh, printed and being really quite well pleased with the uh, the prints that came off, I set out to uh, do a few upgrades. <clears throat> and uh, there are things about the machine that probably um, would benefit from a couple of upgrades. So, if I slide this back, perhaps we can see uh, here is the fan and this is the little motherboard that runs the printers in here and this is exposed so things could drop down in there so one of the things that I printed um, was a guard to go there so let me let me put that on there and and uh, let me position the camera and let me put that on there and then I'll show you the next bit okay so let's install this little fan upgrade there's two screws here that have to be removed and we're going to reuse the screws to attach the uh, fan guard in place. Okay, so I think that's a worthwhile upgrade to do the machine just to keep uh, junk from falling into the, uh, into the fan. So any pieces of filament, dust, or whatever. So the next bit that uh, I think needs attention um, is the back of the display and I'll bring the camera around so that you can see that. Okay, so when we were assembling the um, the printer, you recall that the back of the of the display is exposed, right? The PC board is. Now, it's low voltage. You're not going to hurt yourself or anything like that, but uh, to prevent damage uh, to the board itself, I found an upgrade that provides a cover uh, for the back of the board and uh, so I'm going to install this next. So there's two screws that hold the Ender 3 display on so I'm just going to take these out and here we'll see the ribbon cable that plugs in from the uh, from the control board and there are four screws so this the design of this one here uh, allows you to use the existing screw so let me uh, get things ready here and and uh, we'll install this. Now I do want to mention that there are a few different of these covers available. Some that you know have the uh, little uh, piezo buzzer covered, some that offer varying levels of um, exposure for these plugs. So I just opted, you know, the buzzer doesn't bother me um, and I just want all the plugs exposed. So this simply pops on over here like this. Existing screws go in. Okay, I'm going to snug these up gently. And there you have it, the uh, display is nice and protected, nothing's going to short it out, and we're good to go. So we'll just install the plug back in, and install it back on the printer. Okay, that's another upgrade done. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is, uh, or, or to talk, upgrade and talk about, is a little cover for the end of the uh, y-axis uh, belt feed and I'll reposition the camera and show you that. Okay so what we're looking at here is the end, uh, the front end of the 
y-axis uh, feed belt and, and idler bearing and so this is just exposed and stuff can uh, uh, fall in there and whatnot so what I've printed is a little upgrade that just covers that up it goes right there snaps right down and there you go it's, it's covered and protected nothing's gonna happen to it so look there are a number of uh, upgrades that you can do to this machine print upgrades that you can do to these machines these are just a few of them and let me bring the camera back in and uh, we'll uh, talk about some of the other things that could be done with the uh, printer. Okay, so some of the other upgrades that you can do are, you know, these are cable clips that will snap into uh, the extrusion uh, to hold the cable. So I printed a few of those out for some cable management. Um, also printed out a, a fan uh, shroud, different style of fan shroud and, and and uh, fan duct to uh, adjust the the duct um, the ducting for the heating of the PLA. Um, I probably will print out some cable management uh, like an, an energy chain or something like that for the back of the printer. Uh, the point was I wanted to do enough prints um, to see what I thought about the printer, and uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But now you know um, most of the folks who follow me on YouTube are home shop folks um, and so you might be asking yourself why a 3d printer well let me uh, show you some examples of some stuff that has been that that uh, my son and I have 3d printed that has been very helpful in the shop so one example is this handle that I use for the end of the draw bar on uh, on the draw bar for my ER32 collets and my um, Morse Taper 3 collets so because they don't have to be overly tight they're self-locking uh, um, systems so that's a, a handy use for a 3D printer a uh, here's a indicator tool post uh, uh, AXA uh, tool holder to hold the indicator 3D printed um, very very nice uh, so you know there's a lot of uses for it in the shop um, here's a spindle nose protector uh, for my Atlas uh, 10 lathe works real well um, I have a uh, AXA tool holder and I know this is printed out in two colors but it run out of black and had to start to white um, so it's uh, pretty pretty nice little addition uh, Morse taper 3 uh, uh, holders these uh, mount to the wall again these mount to the wall too and you're and your blocks slide on you know your hopefully this is in frame you see here that your blocks will slide on onto the holder so Morse taper 3 holders um, here I have a this is a den rail ER32 collet holder um, so there are a lot of uh, various and sundry uses for the sprinter in the uh, home metal shop and then finally I want to talk about this this is a this is a scraper gauge. Now this one here was made by Chirpy. Uh, if you guys uh, don't know who Chirpy's Tinkerings is, you should check him out. He's a, he's a uh, home machine builder, caster, all around jack of all trades. He's and a great guy to boot. Now this is based off of uh, Stefan Gottswinter's uh, uh, scraping gauge that, that he shows. Uh, but uh, let, me give, uh, let me move the camera and give some closing thoughts about this printer. So guys, what, what can I say about the Ender 3? Hey look, um, this is an awesome entry level printer. It prints well. If it has one fault, and I don't, you can't really even call it a fault, is uh, the bed, you know, I, I picked up some alcohol to clean the bed in case if I had any issues of sticking. Uh, but if, if anything, maybe it sticks a little too well. I mean, uh, that prints uh, jump down on there and they, they're stuck. They're hard to get off. Um, but I tell you what, the print quality of everything that I printed has been really good. And uh, assembly, <clears throat> other than, you know, there's a little poking around, fiddling around with the x-axis of the machine, uh, the instructions are pretty clear. Uh, just just requires a little, a little finagling. Um, but uh, the machine itself, you know, look, guys. I'll be honest with you. Uh, this is worth the money, and uh, probably a little more. I don't, I don't know how they can uh, uh, really sell them for 170 bucks or whatever it is. It's, it's uh, uh, definitely worth it, in my opinion. It's, uh, I, I give it a, I give this uh, 
I give this product an A. So if you're interested um, in this uh, in this printer, I'll provide links down below. Uh, Banggood has a sale at the time of this recording. Uh, the links will be down there. I'll also provide links to all of the 3D models that I've printed with it. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them down in the uh, in the comments. But uh, you know, guys, I'm really really pleased uh, with this uh, with this uh, Creality Ender 3 printer. This is a this, this is a nice printer, um, a great uh, entry level printer, I would think. Um, it's going to be useful in the shop for making uh, making some tooling, making some patterns for casting, and probably uh, you know your imagination's the limit. So um, it's goodbye. So thanks uh, for taking the time to watch this review. I hope that you found it helpful. And uh, if you have, like I said, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post in the comments below, or you can email me if you hit the about link uh, on my YouTube page. Uh, there's an email address there that you can contact me if you have a question. Uh, and as always, thank you for your patience and, and, and your kind words. And uh, uh, if, if you like these kind of videos, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. And other than that, have a blessed day.